Welcome back to The Daily Dean. Today we're going to be talking about the boo-boos I've sustained in the past, uh, including but not limited to head injuries, knee injuries, foot injuries, and other things. So, first off, in chronological order, this one I don't actually remember. Um, it was when I got uh, dropped on my head as a baby, and <laughs> it's a bit of an exaggeration. It was more like when I was a toddler, around two years old or something, and why is there a, a knot in my hair? And it wasn't really being dropped, I fell onto concrete. Um, apparently it was some, well, this is how my mom tells it. There was this swivelly chair in a storage unit that we were going to. I was spinning on that when I was two years old. And then I lost balance, plopped on the ground, and I was crying real bad. My mom and dad came over, they were like, oh my god, and as um, parents, you know, they're concerned, and so they take me to the, the hospital, they're like, hey yo, our baby fell, and uh, the doctor, uh, he was like, oh, that's, uh, that's pretty tough, dude, and it was swelling, as they recall, and in the words of my, my dad, he said it looked like I had like a unicorn horn, and you can actually still see like a little mark when I raise my eyebrows right around here where it's like an indentation in the middle of my forehead. That's where I felt uh, right in this area. And they just told them to put ice on it. So healthcare system, that's pretty funny. But uh, anyways, besides that, here's a, d a memory I do remember. Dried up Play-Doh should be classified as a war crime because you throw that at people and it hurts like 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 super bad and like i remember we were playing around my brother was at the top of the stairs or something like that and i was at the bottom of the stairs and he threw something at me and i do remember it was dried up play-doh something the size of his fist curled it at my forehead and then I started bleeding real bad and I r recall vividly going to the bathroom and washing that off and getting a band-aid put on it because it was uh, one of the you know a very defining uh, defining excuse me crucial moment in my life to get this kind of injury from play-doh of all things so yeah that should be illegal and um oh I remember when I was younger on the playground you run around uh, we were playing Foursquare in elementary school, so around first or second grade, so I would have been like six or seven or eight. Somebody uh, was getting a ball, and because it got hit out, and I was getting it as well. I tripped, or I think they like they like um they pushed me or something, and I tried feigning like the worst injury possible. Prior to this, I actually scraped my knee, so there was a scab forming, and I was like, oh my god, look what you did! And I tried placing the blame of the scab on the person who pushed me, and I was, you know, I, I don't know what was going through my head. I considered, like, you know, lying about it to make them feel bad, but, like, I'm reflecting on that, and I'm thinking, that's so silly, because then they called, they called me out on that. They were like, that looks like that was there before. And I was like, oh, well, uh, 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 you, you made it worse. And you know, there was no reason to do that, right? We could have just kept playing and nothing would have changed about the game. But ah, I just, that was such a petty thing to do, you know. But I guess, you know, it's seven years old, eight years old. Uh, just things kids do. And, oh, lots of injuries during cross country and track. You run and sometimes there's precarious little, little uh, thingies and Devits or divots or you know trenches that you trip over those things those trips happen a lot and um, Sometimes there's not really memorable ones because they're always you know they're, they're just not really that significant, but sometimes hurtful uh, hurting but probably the biggest biggest the worst injuries I've had were not the play-doh ones probably not biking when I fall off my bike and, and like grate my knee against the the concrete and oh my god it, it's kind of gross to think about but you know chunks of my skin you know came out maybe the size of like um what would be a good comparison like a maybe like a half of your fingernail on your pinky and that was in my um little region on my knee right here and you know thinking about it um, I don't know why I just don't slow down, but, you know, it's because I those happen when I'm going down hills and I trip or fall or something like that, and my knee becomes, you know, a meat crayon on the sidewalk. And <laughs> a bit of a gross description, but 
Um, it takes a, uh, okay, now this is gonna be kinda gross, uh, so viewer discretion, this is probably gonna be the last thing I talk about, so you can probably skip ahead. I remember waiting for my mom to pick me up from, you know, biking, uh, because I couldn't bike anymore, my knee was hurt after I became a meat crayon, and after I got home, rinsed it out and put a band-aid over it, I checked it after two days, and I peeled off the band-aid, and I tried picking at it, which is kind of gross to see, you know, underneath the skin, is it green? If it's green underneath the scab, that means it's infected. But it wasn't a scab, it was like, it was like dead skin that was left over that I didn't pick off from, uh, from putting the band-aid on, that was now trying to reattach itself to my skin. So I like picked that off, and it was slimy, like connected by a little goop that was attached to the inner side of the skin and thankfully it was pink and that's pretty good to know but um that's about it i just uh remember scraped knees are terrible scraped knees are terrible so injuries not fun but they're fine so thank you for listening to my gross recollect uh, recollections of these these i guess stories i guess there's nobody better way of putting it but anyways thank you bye